tuning in to the Miss Victoria's Health Forum. This is Miss Victoria. And today an employee of mine came up to me and asked me a very, very good question. And it got me thinking, what is the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? That was her question. And I realized then that we are always, always talking about type 2 diabetes that I never took out the time to explain the nature of type 1 diabetes. So what am I going to do? I got an idea. I said, I am going to explain this to people because if she doesn't know what the difference is, many of us may not even know what the difference is neither. So I'm going to take the time to go over the information that we gathered. And besides, I have been talking about diabetes and pre-diabetes, and I'm going to go ahead and go on with it, okay? The American Diabetes Association claims that and confirms that there are approximately 1.4 million people in the United States diagnosed with diabetes. This includes pre-diabetes, type 1 diabetes, and type 2 diabetes. And there is a significant difference between type 1 and type 2 and pre-diabetes. And I'm going to ex try to explain both type 1 and type 2 diabetes as quickly as I can. Okay, so type 1 diabetes is a disease, is an autoimmune disease, differently from type 2, meaning that the body's immune system starts to attack the beta cells that are located in the pancreas, so in the tissues of the pancreas. And then when the beta cells get attacked, they produce a minimum or maybe no insulin at all. So we're looking at these beta cells attacked and there's no insulin production. The hormone insulin that is released by the pancreas, remember that we talked about it before, is responsible for regulating the blood sugar. When the pancreas is unable to function, it isn't able to distribute glucose into the cells properly. So the causative agent of immune disease is unknown, right? So if there's no reason why a person will get type 1 diabetes, but researchers are trying to find the answers for this. So when they find out and I find out, I'm going to let you know. But what I do know is that stress, as I mentioned in many of my segment, eating a load of processed foods and refined sugars, as well as having a sedentary lifestyle, meaning no physical activity, not sleeping well, or if you have some kind of illness or if it's a genetic predisposition, all of these can contribute to type 1 diabetes. It is essential for us to clarify that children and young adults are the predominant cohorts that suffer from type 1 diabetes. So you'll see this more in children and in teenagers. But sometimes in really scarce um, situations, you will find it in an adult. And the symptoms that we all need to look out for for both type 1 and type 2 is significant weight loss or weight gain, tingling in or numbness of the extremity, so especially in your legs, if you feel tingly or that you don't feel your legs. If you're constantly thirsty, if you're urinating frequently, if you're nauseous, you're vomiting, or you have an accelerated heartbeat, or you get hangry or you feel exhausted. And when I say hangry, I mean that you get really angry when you're hungry. If you feel dizzy, if you have blurred vision, if you have certain food cravings, and if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, I suggest to go seek out medical attention and get tested as soon as possible. Now, moving on to type 2 diabetes, if you remember in part 1 of the pre-diabetes segment, we explain how the cells resist the absorption of insulin, right? We told you that the pancreas continuously tries to send the cells insulin so that it could gain energy. And no matter how much insulin the pancreas releases or sends to these cells, the cells can care less. Type 2 diabetes is an insulin resistance, okay? So the pancreas is producing insulin, but the cells refuse to absorb, causing insulin to incorporate in the bloodstream. At the present time, there is no medical cure for type 1 diabetes. See, persons with type 1 diabetes usually must inject themselves with insulin into their bodies or they use an insulin pump to ensure that they have the right amount of insulin throughout their cells, throughout the day, to make sure that they don't pass out or they get sick, okay? 
often type 1 diabetes they must check um the type 1 diabetics they must check their blood sugar to help manage the insulin levels since they tend to fluctuate up and down luckily pre-diabetics and type 2 diabetics have a chance to reverse their diabetes with exercise and diet and we spoke about um reversing diabetes in part two of pre-diabetics but don't fret we also have herbal remedies that will help and actually in supplements that will help and be beneficial to help regulate blood sugar production it will also help change your diagnosis yes there are options before turning into conventional medicines so it's very important for you to take your time um to keep on you know following us because the information doesn't stop here stay tuned because we're gonna have our next segment which is diabetes part four supplements and herbs that help pre-diabetics and type 2 diabetics i want to thank you like always for watching do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel it's very important that you do so you could get these notifications like and share this information with your friends and your family i am victoria with Miss Victoria's Health and Wellness Forum, have a blessed, healthy, and happy day.